So one of the things that I hear all the time is, what's the best bass fishing lure for insert here? Uh, and the problem is there, Ill, there isn't really a best bait answer. There's a best bait or best lure for a particular set of circumstances at a particular time in those particular conditions based on the combination of what's going on at that time and those conditions. So again, I'm gonna simplify things, so I'm not gonna make it too complicated, but stay tuned because later on, I'm gonna do a deeper look at all of these where I really get in depth about the rod, reel, lure, line, presentation, types of casts, types of retrieves, and all of that you should use for each category. But this is gonna be an overview. So if you're just getting started bass fishing, you really have an idea of where to start. If I was going to recommend an angler getting started in bass fishing, what two categories should they start on? I would say soft plastics and jigs, okay? Soft plastics and jigs are probably two of your more versatile baits out there. Soft plastics have baits that fish from the top of the water column to the middle of the water column to the bottom. You've got floating worms and trick worms and things like that that are by and large going to stay in the upper part of the water column. You've got soft plastics like uh, zoom horny toads that you drag across the top, top toads that you drag across the top. You've got hollow body swim baits and paddle tail plastics that you fish anywhere from the top to the middle and even to the bottom of the water column depending on if you put them on and combine them with a jig. And then you've got your creature baits, you've got your crawfish baits, you've got your tubes and you've got all of those soft plastics that when most people think of soft plastics they actually think of a bottom bait. They think of a worm, uh, a crawfish bait, a creature bait or something along those lines. You get into your jigs um, and then you get into hard baits. And so, in my opinion, if you're gonna add baits in order, I would add soft plastics first, I would add jig second, I would add wire or bladed baits third, and then I would come in with my hard baits. And then after hard baits, that fifth category would be your specialty baits, your high-end swim baits, your hybrid baits, baits that have characteristics of both categories or multiple categories or you know really specialized presentations like umbrella rigs and things like that which fall into the wire and blade category but they're really something of a hybrid because they have wire they have blades and a lot of times they have soft plastic so it's a really a, a hybrid bait so let's talk about getting started if you're going to get started i would say the number one lure that you should start fishing with is something like a texas rigged seven and a half inch worm. If you have never watched my video on how to rig a Texas rig, I'll link that up in the description box. A Texas rig is simply a line going through a weight to a hook, which is your terminal tackle, rigged onto a plastic, thrown out on the bottom so that the, the weight can slide up and down, and then the hook is inside the plastic. Fish picks it up, it, it's got some movement, and you set the hook and you can fight the fish. Once you peg it, it becomes a Florida rig, uh, and we'll get into Carolina rigs and Florida rigs when we take a deeper look uh, into soft plastics and we'll get into some of the more advanced rigging tactics and techniques. But by and large, if you're looking to get started in bass fishing, I would make soft plastics the first category that you added. They're versatile, they're easy, they're deadly effective, and bass spend as much if not more time on bottom than they do anywhere else. So they're a deadly effective bait. They're easy to fish, they're easy to set the hook on and they're easy to master the technique. By and large with a soft plastic bait, you throw it out, you have some type of weight on it or it's weighted itself, it falls through the water column, you watch for your line, you move the rod with your, you move the lure with your rod, not your reel, you wait to see some indication, feel a bump, uh, see your line swimming through the water, you reel down, you set the hook, you fight your fish and there's a really high hookup ratio on soft plastics. Now, the next category that I would add would be a jig. Now, this is because I'm recommending this to someone else. If it was left up to me, the first lure that I would grab almost any time if I was trying to be effective, trying to fish for money, or trying to, to cover a lot of water and be versatile, it would be a jig. A jig is a bait that I can cast out, I can let it hit the bottom, I can hop and pop it, I can drag it and stop it, I can scoot it and wait, I can pick it up off the bottom and swim it through the water column. Uh, it represents you know, a crawfish or a creature bait on the bottom. It, rep it represents a brim or a panfish swimming through the water column. Uh, it can be almost burned across the top and be deadly effective. It can be pitched and flipped into pockets. When it comes to versatility, I think a jig, and more specifically, a football jig, a jig with a rounded head that's curved and elongated, basically shaped like a little football that is going to come through everything a lot easier is the most versatile of the jigs. You can get specialized with swim jigs and 
and structure jigs and things along those lines. But for the most part, the easiest to fish, most all around deadly effective jig is a football jig. Um, I'm a big fan of a half ounce or bigger in, in water that's got any kind of depth to it or any kind of current to it. Once you get no current and you get less depth, I'll go to a lighter jig. If I'm fishing uh, super clear water, I'll go to a lighter, smaller jig. So the bait's a little more compact and, and, uh, and, and works a little better in those conditions. By and large, I'm fishing what I'm fishing right now. I've got a seven foot three, extra heavy, extra fast, football jig rod. I've got a 6.5 to one gear ratio um, reel. I've got 30 pound braided line and 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon leader tied in. So I've got that knot right there. And that is a really good all around. So in an earlier video, I said the number one go-to rod to get started, the ATV of fishing, is a seven foot medium heavy moderate action. The lure that is the all around go-to, in my opinion, ATV of fishing would be a half ounce football jig with a soft plastic trailer of some type on it with a nice weed guard and either black or green pumpkin. You can get crazy with it, but honestly, with those two colors and that size, that's the ATV of fishing. It's gonna catch them whether you swim it, hop and pop it, vertically jig it, slide it on the trunks of a cypress tree. It's gonna be deadly effective. So if you're one of those people that don't wanna watch a 20 plus minute video to get all the little nuggets, and if I'm gonna end the video right now, and if this is the end of your attention span, let me say this. Get yourself a four inch compact creature bait of any kind, for the most part, get yourself a half ounce bullet weight, Texas rig that, take a half ounce jig and use the same creature bait, get you two rods, get yourself a heavy action, a heavy power, fast action rod and get yourself a medium heavy, um, moderate rod, get a little bit longer rod in that heavy fast rod, 7.3 in this case, and get a little bit shorter rod, a seven foot rod for that soft plastic. With those two combinations, you can pretty much catch bass anywhere, at any time, anywhere in the country. And I'm just gonna tell you that. You can get a lot more specialized, you can catch a hell of a lot more fish, you can cover a lot more water with crankbaits and spinnerbaits and things like that. You can get a lot of fun out of fishing topwater frogs and, and hard bait topwaters and you know deep diving crankbaits and things along those lines and those all have a place in the arsenal. But if you want the payoff pitch, if you say I'm brand new to bass fishing and I wanna get started and I don't wanna get crazy Get yourself some three, four, and five volt hooks. Get yourself some quarter, half ounce, and three quarter ounce weights. Get yourself a rod and reel that you can afford that's quality. Fast action, seven foot plus in a heavy power. Get yourself a seven foot medium heavy in a moderate action and a medium heavy power. Get yourself some soft plastics. Again, quarter ounce, half ounce, and three quarter ounce weights. Three, four, and five odd hooks. Then get yourself a half ounce jig and start from there. You can add a three quarter ounce jig later, you can add a three ounce, three eighths ounce, and you can get a quarter ounce and all that other stuff later. Start off, get yourself four jigs in two colors, two black, two blue, mix it up with some soft, soft plastic trailers on there. And if you're just getting started in bass fishing, don't add anything else to your arsenal until you're flat out smashing them. Because pretty much anywhere, in most conditions, anytime in most places, with a Texas rig saw plastic and a half ounce jig, you can catch bass. Once your techniques improve, once your casting ability improves, once you get somewhat bored with it, then the next thing that I would do is add in wire baits. I'm gonna call wire baits anything that has a wire, a spinner bait, a Alabama rig, a which is a hybrid, a, uh, a blade bait, because it does have a wire that connects it, a blade bait being a bladed jig, like a chatter bait, and then get really good at fishing those. Fish them at the top of the water column. Let them fall for a three, four, or five count. Fish them in the middle of the water column. And then learn how to throw your bladed bait out. Let it hit the bottom. Pull up on it a little bit and slow reel it. And just slow reel it and vary your speed as you can feel that blade ticking along the bottom and start catching fish. What that is, is you're fishing a bladed jig, a bladed bait, like a spinner bait or a bladed jig along the bottom. You're covering more water. You're staying in the strike zone a little bit longer but you're covering more water than you would with a plastic or a jig, and you're then adding that bait fish representation, that vibration, that flash to your mix. After that, the next thing that I would add is hard baits. Hard baits are gonna be your walk the dog, 
style top waters, your cast and retrieve style top waters like a, a whopper plopper or a, a choppa or something like that from Berkeley. Any of those baits that you just throw out, let it hit, hold your rod tip up and reel it in. Your buzz baits are going to fall into that wire bait category and you're going to want to fish a buzz bait as part of that wire gate category. That'll build your confidence into going to your whopper ploppers, your top water walk the dog style baits because honestly until you get confidence in a top water most people don't have confidence in a top water so they don't fish it long enough. The first top water in my opinion that you should ever throw is either a zoom horny toad soft plastic bait so you can take that all the way back to my first recommendation or a buzz bait which falls in the wire bait category. From there get into your hard baits below the surface. So you got top, you got middle, and you got bottom. Your top water baits are going to be your walk the dogs, they're going to be your whopper ploppers, they're going to be which are cast and retrieve, they're going to be your big swim baits that float, sink, or suspend, um, and then they're going to be your crank baits. You're going to have all different styles of crank baits. You're going to have those intermediate depths with your square bills and your shallow runners. You're going to have the the middle of the water column with your DT series from Rapala and you know series like that from Strike King that dive to a specific depth in that four, six, eight, and even ten foot range. And once you pass that ten foot range, you're getting in your deeper series. You're getting into your DT 12s and DT 16s from Rapala. You're getting into your deep divers from Strike King. You're getting into your Norman baits. Again, I'm going way more specific than I wanted to, but I want to break this down for you. Take an incremental approach to learning the lures, the techniques, the presentations, how to fish them, and master them one technique at a time. If you got to start somewhere and nowhere else, start with soft plastics. After you get confidence in soft plastics, add in your jigs. After you get confidence in your jigs, add in your wire baits, your spinner baits, your bladed jigs, and your, uh, your, your buzz baits and things along that. From there, go to your hard baits. Start with your topwater hard baits, move into your square bill crank baits, go to your intermediate depth divers, then go to your deeper divers. But keep in mind, you're going to have to have some technique specific stuff to fish those crank baits effectively. I'll get way more into that and way more in depth in a future video series. I really wanted you to give you the top four techniques to getting into, or the top four categories of baits, and a little bit of a thought process is into where to start. I know it can be overwhelming walking into a tackle shop, going to a website like Fish USA, and starting to look around, and you just have so many options, it blows your minds. Creature baits and worms to start. Jigs, second. Take those creature baits and make them jig trailers. Add in your wire baits, your spinner baits, your bladed jigs, your, your buzz baits. From there, go to your hard baits, start off with your top waters, then get into your square bills or start with your square bills and then add your top waters, then get into your intermediate depths, get in, getting into those little bit deeper divers, fishing off of points, fishing off of edges, channel bends, creeks and things along those lines. And then once you've got all of that mastered and you really have a good job of pinpointing fish, then add in your deep diving crankbaits and things along those lines. All of those fish you can also target with your jigs. You can target with swim jigs. You can target with soft plastics, but you get to cover more water and you get to appeal to those more aggressive fish by using those deep diving crankbaits. So again, plastics, jigs, wire or blade baits, hard baits. From there, master those techniques in that order before you get too fancy and too specialized. Tune in for the next video where I take a deeper look at each one of these techniques and then talk about the reel, rod, uh, line, lure, all those combinations when to fish them, where to fish them, why to fish them. Guys, I'm Chad Hoover. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do me a favor, head down to the description box. Check out the links to some special deals that the folks over at Fish USA have been gracious enough to offer to all of you guys. Help us by supporting the channel by using those affiliate links. It helps us create content. It helps you by getting special deals. And it turns you on to shopping at the best tackle shop in the country. Fish USA. America's Tackle Shop, thanks for watching today's video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Subscribe if you haven't done so. And if you've subscribed, please don't forget to turn on those notifications.